Hi everybody, it's Erin. Okay, so I I don't know what I've been doing for the last couple years. Um, I've been buying books nonstop, so this is going to be a giant book haul, but it's not books that I've bought. Um, this is where I don't know what I've been doing for the rest for the last few years. It's been crazy. I've been spending so much money on books. Um, I love to read. I love to have a book. I love to put on my shelf. But sometimes you get those books where they're just not that good, right? So you always spend all this money and you waste your money. That's so frustrating to me. So what I discovered, and I know this isn't anything new, but it's ridiculously new to me and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it. The library. What on earth? Where, like... What have I been doing? Spending all my money when I could be getting something else for myself on books. And I go to the library, it's like, what, 12 bucks a year, a dollar a month? And, um, and I've gotten tons of books that I wanted. Now, if there isn't something, it's taken out, you can put a hold on it. It's the coolest thing ever. You just gotta wait your turn, kind of do that thing, be patient. But there's so many books I picked up that I don't think I'll have ever a problem being patient or not. I mean, I'll always have something to read. So, that being said, this is going to be a giant library book haul. I'm going to do it in two segments because I know I'll never fit them all in. And I mean, this would have cost me hundreds of dollars, all these books. And I'm getting them for a dollar a month. You do the math. So anyway, I'm going to get started. Uh, the first book I want to read, or I want to get into, it's actually a series. It's called the Earth Series. Now, um, the author is Jean M. Oriel, I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, and the first book in the series is called The Clan of the Cave Bear. Looks like that. I just finished this first book, okay? It was very, very good. Um, basically, it's, I'll give you the, I'll give you the just, uh, justification of it. Um, it's set in the Ice Age, and it's about a clan, clan of the cave bear, who, um, basically they find a girl named Ayla, she has lost her family in an earthquake, and so she's all by herself. And this clan comes across her, and she's not the same as them. But um, they take her under their, their wing, and basically she grows up being uh, part of the clan. Now, she's different from them. She looks different. She acts different. Uh, she tries to fit in, but there's always something around the corner. I loved this this story. Ayla, I just... I had so many feelings for her. I, I, you know, I felt bad for her. I felt happy for her. I was rooting for her the whole way. The writing was beautiful. Um, it was like a coming of age novel, you know, like going through those awkward phases as like a kid and moving into your teenage years and then moving into an adult. I felt it all. I um, definitely, definitely recommend this series. I'm on to the second one, which I will put all of the, there's a bunch of them. I think there's like eight of them. So I'll put all their names down um, in the bottom here. Uh, if you do want to follow along, I'm on the second book. I highly recommend this series. It was such a beautiful story, um, you know. People getting over it, you know, it's teaching people to get over certain things that you maybe, you know, appearance wise, you, you, you look, you just look past that, you know, um, I just loved it. It was so nice. It was, it was very nice about family and love and it was just a beautiful, beautiful written story. So I highly recommend it. It's, um, again, it's, uh, the clan of the cave bear. And, um, the second one is Valley of the Horses. And again, I'm on this one, so I've just started. Um, I'm only probably about 100 pages in, not even. So, um, and they're pretty substantial novels. I mean, look at that sucker. Uh, it didn't it took me about a week and a half to read this, and I was reading it uh, nonstop. The other one, the next one is um, the Mammoth Hunters, and then this one is the fourth one. I didn't get the Mammoth Hunters; it's on hold. Um, but this is the Plains of Passage, so I do have those. I'm gonna return this one so somebody else can read it. And um, the only thing I didn't like about it, the names were really hard to follow at first. Uh, the Ice Age names, Grod, Groove, they're all very similar. I I had to go back a couple times and figure out who was with who and who made it to who and. That was the only thing I could actually say that was really tough. This book, too, a lot of descriptive narrative about, like, the plains and about the environment. Um, it set a really good, uh, uh, you know, picture in your head of where you are. But it can, it did drag on a tiny bit when it come to that, came to that. Um, it's the only thing I can say I kind of skimmed a little bit over. But, um, again, if you're into that, you will love this book. It definitely puts you in that mindset. So I love these. Get them. Moving on. The next one I'm pretty excited about is um, it's by Patricia C. Reed. 
I think. It's called 13th Child. This is the first book. There's a second one coming out very soon. Like, um, I'd say even, even in the next, like, three weeks or so. Um, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head now. But I'm going to grab it. This is about um, F is born a 13th child. Her brother Lan is a 7th son of a 7th son. So he's supposed to, I guess, be really, really, possesses amazing talent, um, magically wise kind of thing. And she is supposed to bring doom to everybody because she's the 13th child. Basically, her family moves to a frontier, which is, um, her father moves there to be a professor of magic. And then this frontier is really close to the magic divide that protects settlers and the beasts of the wilderness. So it goes through a whole series about that. I've heard really good things about this. The second book's coming out, like I said, very shortly. I want to finish this before the second one gets out, and um, I'm definitely going to be picking that up. So again, it's The Thirteenth Child. Uh, next one is a book by Deborah Kerbel. Uh, it looks like this. It's called Lear, uh, Lure. Lure, a novel? It's short. I mean, it's not very, it's not, not a huge novel. It's, um, basically Max Green is a guy. His parents moved from Vancouver to Toronto. So it's kind of the Canadian home city. I like that. And he doesn't know anybody. He has no friends. He's brand new. Um, everybody's ignoring him. He just can't fit in sort of thing. So basically, um, oh, I guess to make matters worse, he's in love with an older girl who's completely out of his league. So he's just missing out on all aspects of his, um, you know, young childhood education. Uh, life there I guess not even just education but life and then um I guess he just Max goes to a local library and um it's rumored to be haunted so he starts to get some clues like the ghost is trying to reach out to him which he is so this ghost is named John and basically with these clues Max starts to piece together um a chain of events that connect the spirit to the building blah 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 it's gonna get into that but I guess there is some stuff about um hauntings and um the fishing lure that's why it's called lure um it looks kind of good i don't know it's gonna be a quick read so why not throw it in in the mix um again it's uh it got quite a few like i read a really quick review on the internet and it looked like it got quite a few good reviews so that's exciting so that's uh another one i'm gonna throw in another quick um series I guess I picked up. I think there's three, maybe four of them. I'm not even sure to be honest. It's by Tanya Huff and the first one is called Smoke and Shadows. So that's what the first one looks like. Um, basically it's about Vicky and, Vic, Vicky and Henry. So Henry is uh, a vampire and Vicky is a private investigator. They team up and um, start going after I guess demons, werewolves, mummies, zombies, just basically everything under the sun when it comes to supernaturals. Um, I'm just quickly reading here. Uh, when they come across supernaturals they, they do team up with a couple other people as well. Tony I guess gets brought into the picture. He I believe is a vampire as well and he didn't know even vampires existed kind of thing. He thought he was alone and so he all of a sudden you know, really sticks to Henry. They move to Vancouver, which is kind of funny because the other book was too. Um, and just to get his act together, and they start. Tony starts working in a um, in a production studio, so TV. And the shadows start creeping in. People are start dying. That kind of thing happens. I don't know much more than that. It looked kind of cute when it was in there. Um, this is the second one in the series called Smoke and Mirrors. So similar. So the first one is Smoke and Shadows. This is Smoke and Mirrors. Um, I would love to tell you the third one if I can. And it doesn't tell me. It's not out in these books yet. But it is out. Um, it just doesn't tell me. And there, I think there was actually two more. But I could absolutely be wrong on that. It's an older book. But... I am kind of excited to get into those, and I think those will be interesting. So, that's it for my library haul part one. I'm going to do part two because I have a ton more, but I, my tape's already running at nine minutes. One other book I want to throw in. Now, this one I bought a while ago, and I am going to read it, and I just want to throw it in so you guys know what I'm reading. But I bought this. Um, this was one of those chapters, um, bookstore, uh, staff recommended picks. It's called The Witch of Blackberry Pond, and it looks like that. This is an old book. I think it was written in 1982, so when I was born, starting to date myself. But um, 
this uh, is supposed to have a really nice story to it. It won the, what is this? John Newbery Medal, uh, so for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. So, uh, a lot of people said that I've read, told that I'm going to read this book too, said they've read it when they were younger. So that's kind of cool. I never did obviously read it, so I'm going to read it now. Basically, quickly, it's about Kit, who uh, grew up and lived with her grandfather in Bar Barbados. He dies, and Kit has to, um, must leave, they don't say, she's 16, so they can't have her live by herself. So they ship her off to uh, live in a colony in Connecticut with her uncle, and that's the only relatives Kit knows of, so she's forced to move there. And when she arrives, um, she's first of all shocked by the damp gray landscape, can't fit in at school, um, she's just can't fit in even at home with the puritanical lifestyle uh, at, that her uncle kind of lives. So that's a huge, huge, she just hates life sort of thing, um, huge change for her so, till she meets Hannah. Hannah is, um, I believe she's an older woman, yep, she lives alone. Um, she's basically the only person Kit can be herself with. Turns out, Hannah is a witch. Dun, dun, dun. So, um, yeah, Kit has to decide either between trying to fit in or being happy and being friends with Hannah. And it kind of goes from there, and I think it's going to be a really nice story about, um, you know, just stick up for who who you believe in and who you love. So I'm going to read that as well. And again, it's The Witch of Blackberry Pond. I'm going to put all this information down below. This video is already now 12 minutes. Um, also, if you want to follow along with my book club, it's http dot dot slash slash fancynapkin.blogspot.com. I'll put it down below. Please come join me. I put all the books we're reading and you can comment on there. You can see my um, book recommendations, book reviews, all that. And I'd love to have you. So other than that, hope you enjoy. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.